Nigerians are eagerly looking forward to the next general election, especially after a year of fundamental electoral reforms was signed into law, of course, to guarantee free, fair, credible, as well as transparent elections, especially with the transmission electronically and the use of technology. After a couple of years of working on the new electoral bill and its earlier rejection by the executive due to a lot of controversies and alleged selfish insertions by the federal lawmakers, the National Assembly later accommodated all the observations and passed the document for transmission to President Muhammad Buhari, who then signed it into law in late February after months of withholding assent. There are salient and praiseworthy provisions that could positively revolutionize elections in Nigeria through the introduction of new technological innovations. The 2022 Electoral Act, which repeals the old 2010 Electoral Act, has introduced several innovations to regulate the conduct of federal, state and area council elections in Nigeria. The new Electoral Act also allows for the heavy deployment of new technologies in the nation's electoral process using the Bimodal Voters Authentication System or BVAS, an all-in-one technology for the accreditation of voters and electronic transmission of election results. Section 47, subsection 2 of the Electoral Act makes it mandatory that to vote the presiding officer shall use a Beavers smart card reader or any other technology device that may be prescribed by the Independent National Electoral Commission for the accreditation of voters to verify, confirm or authenticate the particulars of the intending voter in the manner prescribed by INEC. The use of Beavers is mandatory and is not an option. There's also the results viewing portal IREV approved for voters to monitor in real time the results from polling units across the nation on election day. By this, INEC is empowered to transmit polling unit level results in real time. Unlike the Beavers, the transmission is also mandatory as provided in section 64 subsection 4 of the 2022 Electoral Act. Under the new act, the use of electronic devices such as Beavers machines, smart card readers, electronic voting machines and other technological devices are allowed in the accreditation process for voters and in the general conduct of elections. The Electoral Act also makes provision for a central electronic voter database which provides that INEC shall keep the register of voters at its national headquarters and other locations provided that the register shall be kept in electronic format in its central database in addition to being kept in manual or hard copy formats. Under the former Act, this register was kept in manual or hard copy format only. INEC has since gone ahead to provide a credible voter register for the 2023 general election, which now stands at 93.5 million voters. We want to compile all the amendments together. You remember we have uh, 2010 as amended, 2015 mm -hmm. as amended. So we want to put all the amendments in one form so that even the judges will have one document to work with. We have now laws and guidelines uh, that are there. In the, in the event you are able to be uh, to one of the offenders, the rules is there, you'll be furnished for that purpose. While, like, issue of card, card snatching, or, uh, uh, snatching of uh, wallet boxes, alteration of result, announcing elections by directs, and any other thing, even using the security agent, even the INO officials, too, if they are found wanting, they will be. Uh, the law will take care of itself on, on them. You have observed election here in Nigeria, especially I want to look at this year, 2022, with the offices in elections in Ekiti and Ocean State. What would you say are some of the challenges or even the knocks you want to give to INEC and the thumbs up as well? I will start from Ekiti and Ocean election, where we saw practically the 2022 Electoral Act as amended that, that President Buhari signed where he was enforced. Uh, I was really excited and it gave hope to democracy. 
where we saw deployment of beavers and integration of technology. Uh, that's the exciting part, where votes are actually counted. But the downside is now politicians know votes are counted, so they're now, they're now using our election as a transaction. And this is where vote buying and vote selling comes into play. Uh, I also think that law enforcement agency needs to do much more. Uh, yes, there's that debate and argument around uh, electoral offences commission. And for me, I don't uh, sign. I, you know, I don't subscribe to it because we have a Nigerian police who is the apex law enforcement agency. Just give them the ne necessary uh, resources, manpower, and financial resources, and the, and expose them to you know state of the art training and equipment. Electoral experts and stakeholders say this provision is laudable as it will provide transparency and effectiveness in the Commission's record keeping and in tracking the number of registered voters who will be voting in the upcoming elections, thereby curbing illegal voting by non registered voters. INEX says it is fully ready to deploy the digital tools for the 2023 general election to avoid human errors. INEC has since deployed these new technologies as stipulated by the electoral laws into action with the Beavers and others recently used in some off-season elections in 2022, especially the governorship elections in Anambra, Ekiti and Ocean States. The role of money and how this would affect the integrity of our, our election. Because sadly, you know, these politicians are making it seem like it's going to be transactional. Yes. We have a new CBN policy, even if they've now uh, sort of reviewed it and, and, and made the, the provision that you, one can withdraw 500,000 per week. Uh, be as it may, you know, is this going to be applicable to everyone or just a few? The combination of beavers and IRF portal have come to stay as a means of voter education and transmission of election results. Reports of clashes among parties and their supporters in some states of the country during the ongoing electionary campaign is worrisome. So too is the reported denial of access to public facilities for parties and candidates in some states of the federation. Parties, candidates and their supporters should not by act of commission or omission further complicate the prevailing security situation in the country. The commission, we don't know what the politicians are seeing. We don't know why they are buying up uh, uh, people's PVCs. The only thing they can use the PVCs to do is to engage in what we call voter suppression. In other words, to make sure that the owners of those PVCs do not vote and do not vote at all. Uh, but if they think that they can buy up PVCs, hand over to other people, and those people will come to the polling unit on election day and vote, that is next to impossibility. The beavers has the capacity to read fingerprints and read facials, and it is only the person who is duly and validly and properly registered that can vote uh, uh, during any election. And the same technology with what we, it was deployed in Kenya for the presidential election. So I'm really confident in the deployment of the uh, beavers, but most importantly, the role of beavers in accrediting, uh, you know, electorate because see politicians you can go ahead and buy as many pvcs that you want but with beavers you can't use it quite notably is that all three elections had the three top political parties in nigeria emerging victorious the all progressive grand alliance abga retained its hold on anambra state with former cbn governor professor charles soludo declared the winner In Ekiti State, the former secretary to the Ekiti State government and candidate of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, declared the winner. And in Ocean State, Senator Demola Adeleke of the People's Democratic Party emerging victorious against the incumbent governor Adegboyega Oyetola of the APC, thereby flipping Ocean State back to the PDP. Observers are optimistic that with this feat, Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, has shown its readiness to conduct the 2023 polls. And despite these successes, INEC has recently warned that next year's general election 
could be jeopardized if the state of insecurity and attacks on its offices continue nationwide as its facilities have been attacked 50 times between 2019 and 2022. INEC says the endless attacks on its offices and facilities in some states poses the greatest threat to the conduct of next year's election. Regrettably, each of the incidents comes with a huge destruction, ranging from electoral materials like voters' cubicle, ballot boxes, to official cars, office furniture, and a countless number of uncollected permanent voters' cards. From Ogun State, where thousands of uncollected PVCs were consumed in the inferno, to Oshun State, where movable and immovable facilities were reduced to rubbles, to several other states like Imo, Ebony, Enugu and Abia in the southeast geopolitical zone where the spate of attacks have heightened. The commission has continued to lament in pains and agony over the helpless situation confronting it. It has sought support from the Office of the National Security Advisor on how to ensure that both the military and police are deployed to safeguard INEC facilities. The state of insecurity is appalling and if we are unable to guarantee the safety of lives and property, then INEC cannot actually do her job. Even the chairman of INEC have said that, you know, security agencies need to guarantee that, you know, his staff and the sensitive materials are secured and they can travel free without any hitches. What becomes of our sensitive material as we go into this election? Because we don't want anything to question the integrity of the process and the outcome, because these are what triggers violence. Uh, we are really, really worried at the level of attacks and uh, the intensity of some of uh, these attacks. Uh, but the, with the election approaching, uh, if these attacks continue, uh, it may pose a grave danger to uh, electoral business. For the attacks that have already uh, taken place, that we have the capacity to recover, uh, but that if these attacks uh, continue, up to the critical period of the electoral process that it may be very difficult for the commission to uh, recover and it will pose a great danger uh, to electoral business and the conduct of the 2020 regional election. It is in the interest of all Nigerians, in the interest of our democracy and also in the interest of the electoral process uh, to have these elections uh, take place and take place on schedule. Uh, but if the attacks continue, especially in some of our local government areas, it may be difficult to hold elections in those local governments. With the new electoral law also came new challenges. By virtue of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2022, anyone holding a political office must vacate the position before he or she can be eligible to participate in a primary election, convention or congress of political parties, either as a candidate or as a delegate. This provision only covers political appointees and does not extend to elected political office holders or public officers employed to the public service. Also, the period when they should relinquish the position seems to be immaterial. This led to some members of the federal cabinet resigning their positions. Prominent amongst them are the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gotswi Lakpabio, Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation, Obunaya Onu, State Minister for Mines and Steel Development, Uche Oga, and State Minister for Education, Chukwe Meka Mwajuba. Others, including the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, Women Affairs Minister, Pauline Talen, Chris Ngige, Minister of Labor and Employment, Petroleum Resources Minister for State, Timmy Pierre Silva eventually rescinded their decision to quit the Federal Executive Council and were reinstated. In what appears to be a major oversight in the new legislation, elected party leaders such as the President, National Assembly members and governors were shut out from voting during party primaries. The Senate attempted to amend the provisions in Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Electoral Act 2022 for statutory delegates, that is, all elected to participate and vote in conventions, congresses and meetings of political parties. But that failed as President Buhari didn't sign the new amendment at the expiration of the deadline. 
Major political parties had to hold their conventions to pick candidates for the next year's presidential elections before the 29th of May 2022, which was the deadline stipulated by the timetable of the Independent National Electric Commission, with only the statutory delegates voting in primaries alongside ad hoc delegates. As such, this is the first time since Nigeria's return to democracy in 1999 that only a handful of party members would have voting rights at the primaries of the parties. Political parties adjusted and party primaries were held all across the country. In the end, 18 presidential candidates emerged from which Nigerians are to elect one amongst them to govern the country next year. They are Prince Malik Ado Ibrahim, Young Progressive Party, Rabi Musa Kwankoso, New Nigerian People's Party, Omoyele Shoure, African Action Congress, Peter Obi, Labour Party, Kola Abiola, People's Redemption Party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, All Progressive Congress, Atiku Abubakar, People's Democratic Party, Hamza Al Mustafa, Action Alliance, Professor Christopher Imomoleng, Accord Party, Dumebi Kachuku, African Democratic Congress, Peter Umeadi, All Progressive Grand Alliance, Okudili Anyajike, National Rescue Movement, Sani Yusuf Yagwaji, Action Democratic Party, Nandi Osita, All People's Party, Adenuga Oluwafemi Boots Party, Adebayo Adewale, Social Democratic Party, Dan Iwanyawu, Zenit Labour Party and the early female candidate Ojai Chichi of the Allied People's Movement. Post-party primary controversies also emerged after the announcement of the elected presidential candidates. Prominence amongst them is that between the runner-up in the main opposition's People's Democratic Party and Governor of River State, Nyesa Owike, who alongside four other governors from the party, have been resolute in their demand for the resignation of the PDP National Chairman Iyoche Ayu before they can support the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. We have had our primaries and the presidential candidate have been merged. But before it was the emerged, there was the issue of where would the chairmanship go to? Because in our party, the chairman come from either the south, and the president can they come from north. Or the president can they come from the south, and the chairman will go to the north. The intention of the founding fathers was that to allow for inclusivity everybody to participate in the hierarchical decision making of the party. There is nothing new in politics and that some people get angry you know when things don't go their way and so on and so forth. So we will, we will overcome that. I have every belief that we are going to do that. There is nothing like a wicked come or a Tiku come. There is one PDP family. Are you go is there any plan at all to meet with Wiki 101 for some kind of reconciliation? Why not? I'm open to that. In the All Progressive Congress, litigations from members of the party, especially the former Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Emeka Mwajuba, who on the eve of the presidential primaries had stepped down from the contest, lingered until the courts threw it out. He had alleged that the party primaries that produced Tinubu as the APC's presidential candidate, as well as that of the PDP's Atiku Abubakar, were tainted by corruption and widespread vote buying, adding that the majority of the delegates were bought over with dollars, hence his call for the disqualification of both candidates. But a federal high court in Abuja dismissed the suit. The APC also suffered a huge dose of defections by some party stalwarts following the same fate tickets or Muslim Muslim ticket decision by the party's candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu after he settled for Kasim Shatima as his running mate. Top leaders like the former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachi Alawal, and former speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, amongst others, have since left the party, even as top officials of the President Muhammad Buhari administration, including the Vice President Yemi Sibajo, have been missing in major campaign stops, with majority of those who contested against Tinubu also less visible at the campaigns. 
What can be a better example of religion in politics than those demonstrated by these governors of APC? Clearly, there is an agenda to politically, religiously, and economically suppress and oppress the Northern Christian. But we are up to the task. We will protect ourselves. We will defend ourselves. And we will defend our interests. The PVC and our prayers will be our weapons of choice and we will massively deploy them in 2023. Once we are one, we can bring Nigeria to the clay and a high heel of Africa. I am just determined with this man. My fundamental disagreement with uh, Siwaju since 2007 was on the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket. That was my fundamental disagreement and departure politically from Asiwaju. Remember, I came out out of PDP on the issue of zoning, and together with Asiwaju, we formed uh, ACN, and I was given a ticket in Lagos, and he insisted to be my running mate, and I said no. I'm not going to have a Muslim Muslim ticket. And because of that, he switched his support to the late Umaru Yaradua. Uh, it is also a fact that when Buhari emerged in 2015 in Lagos, I opposed a Muslim Muslim ticket. I opposed it. And my opposition actually reinforced the decision of President Buhari to pick you know, a Christian uh, running mid. So I have all along uh, opposed that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe it's right for a country, you know, uh, like Nigeria, a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country, that uh, there should be uh, balancing of, you know, interests, whether religious or otherwise. The president of the Night Senate, Ahmed Lawal, who also sought to be the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, lost his re-election bid to return to the Senate with an appeals court affirming Bashir Manchina as the APC candidate for Yobe North Senatorial District for next election. Also, Peter Obi, who had earlier sought the ticket of the People's Democratic Party, defected to the Labour Party where he emerged as the presidential candidate, but not without an outcry by some presidential aspirants in the party who cried out that they were bullied to step down for him to emerge as a consensus candidate, despite their insistence that there should be a primary election. The Labour Party has since been faced with different controversies, ranging from members of the party's National Working Committee feeling edged out of the party's presidential campaign council, with daggers drawn by the Ogun State chapter of the Labour Party against the national chairman, Julius Abure, and the director general of the campaign council, Doyi Okukwe. Also, Okupe's resignation following his conviction over money laundering charges by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, and sentencing by a federal high court all dogged the party. I don't want to send a note of warning because I know now he, he, he you know, is a user, I mean, a, a boisterous manner. He might be thinking this is just a shy play. It is not a shy play. Don't uh, order your I want to make it very clear, clear to you that you are still to be a member of this party and every available means, every, uh, every lawful available means we will use against you with your cohort. You can never come back to this party. We will not sit down with you because you have disobeyed our constitution. I'm not saying I'm not going to spend money for campaign. I'm not going to say I'm not going to buy lunch for people and everything, but I've never knowing in all my talks with Bank or and anything offered any money. The people who are funding me, I'm happy that I, I've, I've actually set up a team to oversee all donations and support 
not because I'm defending comment by my brother. My brother is the brother. I remember my brother. We're very close. I remember prayerful for him. For other things which I didn't succeed, God has given him opportunity to do it and succeed. For me, for me, yes. So if there's anything pending, governance is governance, you don't finish. People are still in government in America. So you stop where you stop, other people will continue from there. In the African Democratic Congress, the ADC, the presidential candidate Dumebi Kachuku was expelled by the rough who led National Working Committee of the party three months after his emergence. The decision has since been challenged and a court ruling in favor of the candidate has been obtained. It will affirm, first of all, my faith in the judiciary. Mm. Secondly, for our supporters who were not clear about the role of INEC in all of this and what was happening and didn't want to waste their efforts in backing the wrong horse, they now realize that it makes sense to stay on track and focus on what's right. And it's a real moral boost, I would say that. With the next general elections barely two months away, political observers say the year 2022 was quite eventful in the political scene, but Nigerians are optimistic about the next general elections, especially the fact that they have a chance to vote in the next leader who they say must be willing, able and capable to tackle the myriads of challenges currently bedeviling the nation. Amaka Uday Walker, Arise News.